Okay, welcome everyone to the worship service of Father God. Yeah, we are here together in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Because we believe whenever we gather together in His name, He is with us, as He promised, in the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, thank you for get, making us, gathering us together on the first day of the week before we have new week, Lord. We are ready to be able to have a godly life to please you a coming week, Lord. Cleanse us by the blood of Jesus Christ and also wash us through the waters in the words of God and anoint us through the Holy Spirit, Lord, so that we may understand who it was, so we may be able to receive the light and life, because your word is life and spirit, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, let me read uh, uh, to, as a meditation over this week, a uh, book of Psalm, chapter 124, verse 1 through 8. If it has not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed up, swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us the stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord, who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we are escaped. escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. We believe our Lord Jesus Christ, with Father and Holy Spirit, made heaven and earth, even you, your body, soul, and spirit. Okay, uh, today's main passage is also the book of Psalm, chapter 126, verse 1 through 6. When the Lord turned again the captivity, of Zion, we were like them that dream. And then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. And then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity. O Lord, as the spring, uh, streams in the south, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goes forth and whippeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with them. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, the theme of this main passage is a blessing of those who saw the precious seed with tears. What is precious seed? Okay. I just bless everybody to understand what the meaning of these words, scripture, and also what is a message given today. On the Thanksgiving Sunday, usually, every, every, every year, okay? We just, you know, worship and Thanksgiving Sunday, one of them, but it is not one of them. We have to understand what is the meaning of Thanksgiving. And the word given today tells us what we should harvest in Thanksgiving every year, uh, doing as an event. And what seed we should sow and why we should shed tears and honestly. In addition, of the eternal blessings of those who sow the precious seed 
with tears and finally rip in joy, harvest in joy. Psalm 126, we just read, is also a song of decrees. It is a song that people of Israel shall sing with joy as they go up to the temple of God, when Israel shall be fully restored and they shall occupy the land that promised to Abraham, and then the temple of God shall finally be built in Jerusalem. 4,000 years ago, when the covenant promised to Abraham by God shall be fulfilled, all of them shall be planted in a holy promised land without this single person scattered throughout the world. God spoke through the prophet Amos. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pu pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, says the Lord thy God. Now when this word is fulfilled, they will say it is as like dream, dreaming. At the time, all the people of Israel will say that everyone will be filled with laughter as one man, and their tongue shall be filled with songs. Then he say that all the Gentile nations will finally realize that they are God's people and that they will glorify God that have done the great thing that God has finally done to the covenant given unto Abraham 4,000 years ago. When the people of Israel sinned against God according to the law of justice of God, inflicted pestilence on the famine and punished them with the sword. Sword of, you know, gentile nations. God used Babylon, Assyria, Persia, Greece, and Egypt, Roman, Rome, and German Nazi Italy with his sword. After God had chosen them as his people, he caused them to live as slaves in Egypt for 400 years. He also allowed them to live in Babylon for 70 years in slavery while they were leaving God and serving idols instead of God. In addition, when God appeared in the name of Jesus to their land, then they rejected him and finally committed the crime of killing God himself. After that, God sent General Titus of Roman Roman Empire, and once again he totally destroyed uh, Jerusalem, the living a stone on a stone. Moreover, from then on, all the Israelites were expelled and scattered on all the earth, I lived with despair and disgrace. Although Israel made it possible to return to the land of promise of Palestine in 1948 with the grace of God, the city of Jerusalem was still occupied by foreign nations, Gentile nations. He caused Moses Dion to rise up to victory in the Six-Day War, finally taking possession of the eastern part of Jerusalem. But three, uh, three quarters of them still living scattered in 14 countries, including America. The place where the Temple of God is located is the place where the Islamic Temple, it is called Temple of Mount is located, and it is not possible to know when the temple of God that they were looking for will be rebuilt. When God finally restores 
them fully and the temple of God is built in Jerusalem, they are finally filled with joy, saying that those who saw with tears will eventually reap the ripping of joy. They shall also say that those who go out and cry with the precious seeds will also come back with joy bringing sheaves. What then is the precious seed that God speaks of today? The Apostle Peter testified in the Holy Spirit about this precious seed. What is seed? Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abides forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withers and flowers there are far away, but the word of the Lord endures forever, and this is the word which by gospel is preached unto you. Yes, all man is seed to reproduce their children, right? You know that already. You learn in school in biology. Biology, right? Session. But the seed of man is corruptible, right? That's why all die. What is seed? What is a precious seed? That means, you know, endure forever. Eternal life. Who can give eternal life? Only God is seed. His Bible says the seed is what? It was a God. Especially the gospel of Christ is a seed to give eternal life. Whosoever believe in him. Apostle Peter testified the gospel of Christ, the grace given to the children of God, is a precious seed. However, God gave the people of Israel the precious gospel through Abraham. It is not corruptible, nor has it given the eternal seed of the gospel. Yeah, at the time, the gospel to the people of Israel is different from gospel to given us in these days. You know, their gospel given to them was related to the land, the earth, okay? Yeah. Let's see what is the precious seed, you know, for them to receive through their ancestor Abraham. Still effective. In the same day, the Lord made the covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites and Kenites and Kedmonites and Hittites and Perizzites and Lufames and Amorites and Canaanites and Gilgashite and Jobshite. Yeah, you know, they, the words of God given to Abraham, you know, to give them the land occupied by this kind of, you know, gentle nations. God's awakening led the servant to Daniel. And Ezekiel to pray with tears as the Israelites were held captive in the land of Babylon. In addition, the servants like Isaiah and Jeremiah, who also preached the message of judgment before the captivities to Babylon, held the seed of the covenant promise to Abraham, a precious promised seed, and went out and wept and prayed. Yeah, they wept and prayed. That's right. With uh, a precious seed given to them. Even though they were in captivity in Babylon, they still believed the word, because believing the words of God, the promises endure forever. They have tears. Many years. Seventy years. In addition, when they were scattered all of the earth from... A.D. 70 to 1948, they tearfully saw, sued, precious seed called 
Zionism. Well, some, uh, sooner or later, the Messiah will come to restore the nation. Zion, Judaism, Zionism. Even now, God is still using his servant to pray with tears for the restoration of Jerusalem. You know, Judaism is a seed of words. You know, the you know, final day shall be able to occupy whole land of Palestine from the river of you know, Euphrates to the river of Egypt, Nile, right? Yeah, they're still, still shedding tears you know, until it will be done. Even now, God is still using his servants to pray with tears for the restoration of Jerusalem. Psalm 126, which is given to us today, is preaching and witnessing the day when the Israelites who shed their precious seas with tears and cried out will rejoice with their joy finally when the words of God is fulfilled. The coming of Jesus Christ, when he established his kingdom, he established the you know, temple of God in Jerusalem, cast out the temple mount, you know, Islamic temple. God has given us precious seed to the church of God. Yeah. Also to us, you know, precious seed to us today through his chosen servant, Paul. And this precious seed is a precious seed given to those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ without discrimination, whether they are Jews or Gentiles. The Apostle Paul testified about this precious seed. Okay, listen very carefully. We receive, you know, precious seed. Are you ready to cry with tears? For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Greek means all the Gentile, including Korean. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Apostle Peter testified that this gospel is incorruptible and eternal seed, just as the covenant given to Abraham in the past is precious seed for people of Israel. In today's New Testament, the gospel of Christ of grace is the most precious seed. It is a seed that gives life and gives the birth to all who believe. Jesus once spoke of the seed in the seeded parable. Now the parable is this. The seed is uh, the word of God. Those by the wayside are uh, they that hear. Then comes the devil and take away the word out of their hearts. Lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy. And these have no root which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. And the which fell among thorns are they, which when they have heard, go forth, and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they, which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. Yes. You are now receiving precious seed, the word of God. Would you examine what kind of heart you have? Just like a way, a rock, heart, or just, you know, a wage, you know, as soon as you receive it, your devil just take away. Whether it is a thorn, Many thorns and water and concern, but I, I bless all of you. Your heart is good soil, good ground, to be sowed by the eternal words of God. Never forget and bring forth. And that's right. Planting seeds that harvesting the fruit, Jesus said that the fruit he spoke of was eternal life. 
when he saw the seed of the gospel of Jesus, we harvest eternal life. Yes. What is better than this? What valuable than this? Jesus said that the fruit he spoke of was eternal life to his disciples. Say not you, there are yet four months, and then comes harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receives wages and gathers fruit unto life. Fruit unto life, eternal. That both he that sows and he that reaps may rejoice together. And herein is the saying true, one sows and another reapeth. Yes. The seed we have to sow is the gospel of Christ, grace. And it is also the soul that has everlasting life through the seed we sow through preaching. Despite the fact that there is no precious seed other than the one who gives eternal life to men, the apostle, apostate church, churches today, seems to be interested only in harvesting in the form of the flesh. Money is the old disciples. Eat and drink. As we have Thanksgiving Day this year, we once again have to know what a seed is and why we must sow with tears and we must cry out for sowing when we stand at the judgment seat of Christ, when we meet the Lord in the air at the time of rapture in the future, we will enjoy the glory of receiving crown of joy for the fruits of life with Christ. Yes. It's not that easy. We have to tears. We have to cry for the souls to be saved with prayer. Not only the word of the gospel, but all the words of promise given un unto us are precious seeds. Not only gospels, all the words of God, from Genesis to Revelation, are precious seeds. We have to pray, shedding tears with endurance, holding all the words of promise of God until those are to be fulfilled when he's coming. The Apostle Paul testified that the sowing of this precious gospel was never difficult. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom. Yeah, unnecessary excellent speech of wisdom. Declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words, kind of persuading words, of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. That means what? The way to sow the seed with tears is what? Only with just Jesus Christ died for your sins and rose again the third day. He died on the cross for your sin. You just believe in him. You shall have eternal life right away. Yes, we only have to say this. The rest of our things are you know, you know, just done by the Holy Spirit. We cannot persuade them. How can we persuade the people? You know, we believe in Jesus, you have eternal life right now. How we can persuade them? No way. No way. Only Holy Spirit can do that on behalf of us. Therefore, he testified that those who participate in the Lord's Supper were worthy to participate in proclaiming the death of Christ. Just, just say, Jesus Christ died for your sin. So simple. By faith, sincerely. With tears. I bless all of you. You understand today's message and decided to, decided not to know Jesus Christ and his crucifixion. 
to sow the seed of eternal life to whom to believe whosoever. Amen. Bless all of you through this message to have kind of brand new day for the future of your life.